Hey, before we dive into the content, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our rock solid content. So the speech title is Less and More. Mm -hmm. You want me to start with it or? Whoever. Okay. Just jump in. I I've already talked about the things I like. I like the story. Uh, he had the most amount of humor throughout all the presentations. I love the writing of the speech. Uh, I love some of the alliteration. You know, uh, I should have judged, um, uh, judged her less, helped her more, uh, partied less, studied more. So he had the, it was very, very tight. Uh, yeah, I, I, there's one line I particularly like. Every day in every country, there are people begging uh, for a new life. So that was like one of the phrases for me that just really resonated with me. Um, and so anyway, so the, the, those are things that I like, and I'm, I, I'm a big time fan. Okay. Let me, let me throw in, the, again, the writing. If you noticed, I don't know if you picked it up, but I noticed it. The, the callback to the daughter throughout the speech, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, that was it was so subtle, it was so subtle, and he goes, you know, but there were probably like five callbacks to this lady's, maybe she has a daughter, and you know, I'm not gonna meet the daughter, and what's going on with the daughter. Um, a good universal message that was in there, and Quan and I have worked a lot together uh, on this. The, the good universal message, a couple things that I would look at on where I felt the speech could be cranked up, and I went over this with you on Friday a little bit, is that there's, there's an increase in, um, you have such a natural, calm speaking style, such a conversational speaking style, which is one of your strengths, but I feel to really impact the audience, you gotta crank that up a little bit and put a more vocal variety, pause, and Ed calls this thing called sameness. Now your sameness is really big, it's a really wide thing, but like Aaron was like really coming in with some vocal variety and pausing and giving us a, a chance to, to sit, in a sec, sit in a moment, whereas you had a sort of a steady pace of slight, what I would almost say slight narration, where I wanted to get more into the story and the emotion of the story. And I, I'm gonna just give you this concept. To me, a speech does not go along like this. A speech is delivered like this. You put a concept out, you let the audience do it, then you give them another concept, and then the vocal variety drops down, and then you throw another concept out as you go across. And I felt you had a, a very even pace with your speech, but there wasn't a point where it really disrupted the thinking, and you had that light go on and go, oh, wow. It was almost, you know, it was like it came up, oh, yeah, the lady came back, she saved you, wow, I need to judge less and, and help more as we came along, and that's where you get that, that emotional tension in there that snaps back that we saw with Aaron's speech after the story, this is your mission. Wow, you know, let's snap back at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, Kwan, you're, you're such a nice guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I hung with him for a whole day in China, it was awesome, we had a good time, and we rode camels together in Dubai as well, so it was kind of cool. But I believe there's something more from Kwang that the world hadn't seen yet, and I will define it in this broad sense, emotional range. Emotional range. How did it really feel to be in that seat? I want to see how you feel about being next to her. She thinks I'm, I, I look Chinese, I'm Australian. What does she think? I'm, I mean, I want to feel that. And when, when you, it hits you, I don't even know if she lived in my direction. But she did that for me? I realized I judged her all along. So combine the emotional range with the vocal variety. Uh, to me, you begin to stretch that a little bit. Anybody heard me on Thursday? Stretch yourself. If you if you do that a bit more, we I think there's range there that we can get more from because you have such good quality, you have such value. You add that to it, it becomes, to me, a, a better experience for the audience when they hear and see you present. That's, just, that's my one nugget I'd offer to you. Did you feel rushed at all at the beginning when, when you started off? I, it's because last year I think I maybe went over time or minimally over time, so that's been playing my mind. Mm. So uh. Because last year I started off slow and mm. that's how I dragged on. So I think now mentally it's like, I don't want to go over time again. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that I had noticed was you eventually came into your Quan pace, which is great. But the very, very beginning, you said that you got you got off the plane, is that right? And then you looked out in the, the pollution. Yeah. 
and it was so strong you couldn't you could look at the sun and I would have especially at the beginning when we're creating that connection with the audience you said it I didn't picture it and have you almost look at the sun and like I can look at the sun like you just didn't take those few seconds so the, cl the better connection you can make closer to the front uh, is really important because we're getting used to you and your style. Does, does that make sense? It was just that one little tiny moment. And, and just, I think that ties into what I'm saying, what Mark is saying on the emotional connection, the emotional range, emotional connection um, with that because it's the same thing. It's like we really feel what you're looking at. It's like, if you, for those of you who've seen me and you, I set up the speech, you walk into the room, you look out and you see 2,000 chairs. You feel the tension in the air. You can smell the coffee in the back of the room. And I actually take that beat and I go, <sighs> kind of like that is the idea. This was brilliant writing. And I knew where he's going with this, but I just want you to see when he said, because of people like her. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, that was so well said, and he was being judgmental, which is setting up his aha later. Right. That's super transparent. When you're, you can't look like the hero, especially at the beginning before you learn your lesson or aha. That's it. No, I'm just seeing what else. No, no, I I agree with what they're saying, and again. Well written, well constructed across the board. Where I, I see your growth can come, it's like well, I think what Mark hit on very well. What I'm seeing is that emotional tension. And I would also, you have a tendency to narrate your stories versus tell them. And that gets into the emotional tension where you're really mm -hmm. just telling us the story versus telling us about the story. And that's, and again, that's what Mark and Darren are talking about. Like, I, I couldn't see this, you know, it's like, yes, I looked out the window and it was so dark I could see the sun see the sun no you're you're telling us the story instead of telling us about the story oh, right. go ahead, go ahead. i was just gonna say even if we saw in your face how gross it was we need to see it on your face like <sighs> i can't even see the sun in just for a moment and that's similar, similar. when when you <laughs> the attendant asked you a question or about, about you and your mother the reaction we, we, we need to see your reaction to being assume that she's a mother. And sometimes just the reaction alone, without words, can have an impact on the audience. The reaction can tell the story. The reaction can, can let the audience, can draw us into the experience of the moment if we see how you react to the idea that she is your mother. Like, no, I don't want to be near her. Like, so just use those, everyone, use the reaction, your facial expression. The range of emotion can really magnify what the audience sees, but more importantly, what they experience. As I always say, don't just give a speech, give an experience. Yeah. So uh, the third week of the month, we have the humor call, and definitely go through, learn, uh, get more laughs by next week. So that's the master program for the humor. But he did perfectly the, what we call the rule of three, which is one of the comedy writing exercises we teach you, which is in balls where he's like, yep, I know which one you're gonna say. Yeah. So the rule of three, and uh, I could not type fast enough with one finger, so you may have to help me out. But you said, I never found out if she lived in my uh, direction of my university. What was the second one? Yeah, so the first was, I never found out her name. Her name. Oh, I never found out her name. Or if she had a daughter. If she had a daughter. So the first, so the way the rule of three works is yeah. the first two are logical, the third one is exaggerated, and it was also I'll for, this is a comedy writing like two, two principles connecting on one, which is a callback. So he used the third one where he not only exaggerated, but he used a callback, which is calling back to a previous punchline if it works the first time. If it doesn't work, don't call back to it. All right, so here's a question, Quan, yes. that we've actually had discussions about that we took it differently. I loved, because this is the way I took it, at the very end, uh, did you, you said if you're judging me because I only said the foundational phrase once, or you said core, core how did, what would your word? Uh, yeah, I think, I think I said foundational phrase. Core, mm -hmm. core, core, core phrase, core, core phrase. Core yeah. phrase. You said, I only said it once. You actually had said it twice. That was the second time you said it. So I got a little confused, but then I loved when you turned it and then you said it again. So if you're judging me, remember, 
judge less, help more. I thought it was brilliant. Were you saying to all of us judging, or were you saying to the judges? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is important. But this is important because they took it the other way. We, we, we. Yeah, last night we were. I I, I thought we you were talk talking. about you yeah. at dinner, just so you know. Darren, Darren and I thought there was you were alcohol talking to, involved. Yes. yes. <laughs> Darren and I thought you were talking to the whole audience, and we got in this like heated discussion. No, it was to the judges, pandering to the judges, and we're going, Pandering. no, it was the whole audience, and, and so, so what was it? It was the idea to to the whole audience. Like, if thank you. Judging me right now because I'm only using this phrase once. Bam! Jim <laughs> Key. Jim Key, I hope you watch this recording. You were wrong. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> and money will be exchanged later. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. But also understand that it was misperceived by some people because mm. we're not fans of pandering to the judges. The judges should never, ever be spoken to. Now, someone can come along and break that rule and make it work. All right. But on that note, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's an important point to remember. You may be meaning one thing, and we've all experienced this. We may be meaning one thing, and the audience interprets it as a different thing mm. completely. And I, I just, I had a quasi-catastrophe, I was doing the social services department of the state of Virginia on a resiliency seminar and I had a slide that I thought was brilliant and it insulted half of the room. Ooh. And I found out about it on the feedback afterwards and I thought it really explained what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people took great offense to that slide and so it happens outside of speech contest. So Quickly, no. Quan, for, because it's, yeah, no, it's, go ahead. complete your thought and I'll ask no, you finish question. It. Do you use an adjective to describe the daughter at some point? Are you you're hoping it had kind of a hot daughter? What was it? What word did you use? Hot or, young and single. No, I didn't. Use hot it. single. I, I think. Oh, I single. I started off saying that I was hoping the lady, lady single, person sitting next to me would be hot young and single. Okay, mm -hmm. hot young and single. No. Okay, mm -hmm. so you said daughter who's single. And then later on I said, well, because she's an old Chinese lady, middle-aged Chinese lady. Hopefully she has a daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought you were going to say who's hot and single, but I just, this is me. I'm married. It's okay. <laughs> 37 years. I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. Did you, did you worry at all about being offensive to women on that? Was that a concern or no? He's 21 years old. I understand, <laughs> but Maureen had a different... I, I hadn't thought, thought about it. No, no, she, she, she was Oh, okay. Um, so okay. definitely more different, especially in, uh, in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And the problem with being in China but most of the time, I don't really get a chance to test in the U.S. audience. It, mm -hmm. it, it was a minor concern. The other concern I had, had was actually offending Chinese people. Mm -hmm. Really? Because mm -hmm. some of them took offense at the way I was portraying them. Oh, and wow. At the end, I, I twisted, I it. twisted it to say, I, I understood that I was offending you, but people still felt offended. Mm -hmm. and that was... Interesting. Okay. Are they getting Probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, somebody we talked to was a, was yeah. a little like I thought it was good. Well, I'll say this. Right. My in, in my mind, I thought, yeah, he's twenty one. That's how twenty one year old guys think. So yeah. I had no problem with it. It seemed. I just sit next to him. It seemed. <laughs> how, 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 how do you know that? Okay. How, how do you know that's how 21 year old guys think? I've Mark? got one in my home who's 24. Oh, so. you got one in your home. So he's 24. Yeah, I was never 21. So I, <laughs> Those well, are, you know, we didn't go to a place called Forever 21. <laughs> no, that didn't work either. Ooh. 0 for 2. Okay, okay. just keep trying. Yeah. Persistence, Aaron said. Persistence. <laughs> Listen to Aaron. Try, try that one on Facebook first. <laughs> uh, those of you new, again, the second week of the month, we focus on stories. And one of our story coaches is Mike. Also, Michael Haig. So we have Mike and Michael. And one of the big ahas I learned from him was the goal of story is to elicit emotion. The goal of story is to elicit emotion. So now whenever I'm judging I, or taking notes, I'm actually writing down if I felt something or not. And I definitely did in yours. And I, I again, I loved that tagline at the end where you, if you're judging me for only saying it, my only question is you said it twice and that, made me a little confused. Anyway, anything else on Kwong's speech? So give him another round of applause. So if you see the value in world-class feedback like that, you will love Stage Time University. If you're an experienced presenter, sometimes we're wondering, what's that little technique or that idea that I, I've been doing this for a while, but what, what, what do I need? 
We've designed stage time so you get world-class processes that you can take with you every time you take the stage and we give you an opportunity to get world-class feedback on our live weekly calls. So check out Stage Time University, dive right in, become a member of Stage Time University where we help you become unforgettable. Thank <laughs> you.